Okay, people, I'm back. Fred White, Tales from the Pen. If you're new to the channel, go down, hit the subscribe button. I'll wait. Click the bell notification next to the subscribe button and click all. So every time I put up a video, you will know about it. If you're new to my channel, my name is Fred and I talk about my experiences in life and I talk about my almost 16 years in the penitentiary and I talk about my prison life and my prison experiences and I do it in a non-glorification kind of way. In other words, I don't try to mislead the youth. I'm, the, I'm out here trying to tell everybody and let everybody know that jail is not a game. There's nothing cool about it. And being a square is good. That's what my, that's what my channel is. Today we're going to talk a little bit about one of the facilities I was in. One of the realest facilities I was in, I must say, like, which is Clinton Correctional Facility. It's up in Dannemora, New York. And it's like damn near Canada. You know, it used to take people six, seven, eight hours, something like that, eight hours, I think, to drive up there. So the reality is I really didn't like my people to come too, too much up there. But when they did come, they would just stay in the hotel and just come see me, you know, for a day or two. You know, to make it more worthwhile. Because, you know, to drive eight hours, to come see somebody for eight hours and then have to drive back home, I mean, that's... It's a tough thing. Sometimes some people take a bus. There's a bus that leaves in the middle of the night. Certain buses all over the place in Manhattan. And they take people to different facilities. So sometimes people go on the bus, bring their toothbrush, wake up in the morning and be at the facility, wash up, put their makeup on the girls and stuff. You know what I mean? So that's how it works here in New York. Um, and Clinton was, Clinton was unlike any place I've ever been to. Right, anybody that been to Clinton would know Clinton, Maine, especially would know like it, it was it was a different, different vibe, different everything. First of all, when I got there, you realize, you know, you, you know, you definitely, definitely in um in 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 hillbilly territory. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when you get off, they send you to like a little reception. I was in this little reception place. That's where I got my TV. <clears throat> right. I didn't get it right away because what happens is when you get transferred from facility to facility, sometimes it takes uh, maybe a week or two sometimes for them when they transfer you to transfer your actual money that you had in the account in the, in the past jail you were in. You have an account. So it takes a while for, to transfer. Don't know how it is now. It's probably quicker now. But back then it took a while. So right away, and then even if your family sends you money, nowadays you can go on the computer, your phone. JPay in New York and you can just you know send money right to your people right away right on the phone but back then you had to wait for like money orders from your family and Clayton Correctional Facility was known as a TV facility okay so what um, what happened was certain maximums in the state took votes and certain jails voted for TVs over packages. You had to give up something. That's just the way it was. Like it wasn't they couldn't just give you TVs <clears throat> and leave everything the way it was. Because at the time you could get one, you could get two packages a month, but they can only total up to, uh, they can only total up to 35 pounds. So you can get 35 pounds of food per month. Okay? Maybe food from the outside, maybe cans of tuna fish or even though they saw that in the commentary just stuff that you may like from the outside you could actually get in New York State jails once a month you know what I mean snacks whatever it was certain things was banned certain things they weren't letting you in to get you know what I mean like for a while you could get peanut butter and then they stopped selling stopped letting you get peanut butter because someone tried to smuggle in like a gun inside the peanut butter jar so they just deaded peanut butter throughout the whole state of New York. You know, like certain certain things. You know, that's the way it was. Certain things you couldn't have. It was on the packages. But anyway, so that's for normal jails. But being Clinton, it was a maximum security prison. You know, s cells. Um, they voted to get TVs, which means they had to give up their packages per month, and you can only get two packages per year now. 
under the new TV rules. But you can buy a TV from commissary. <clears throat> and I think you can order one from the, a catalog. But they had to be the same one that the facility statewide had. You know, like it had to be this, this brown one at the time. Then they came with clear ones later. But they were like brown, 12 inch ones. So when I got to Clinton, um, you know, right away, uh, I got me a, you know, underground TV. You know, I made a move, got a TV. Now, when you get your TV, they carve your name, your, your number on the side of it. And you had to have what was called a TV permit. So if they came to your cell for a cell search and it wasn't your number on that TV and you di or you didn't have a TV permit, they were taking your TV and you were getting a ticket. But I was just so thirsty. I'd just come out the box again, right? Like I was just like, yo, I want to get a TV myself. So I copped one until I can get one legally, right? I was just like, fuck it. If I get caught, I get caught. That's just the way, that's just the way it was, right? Had to have the TV. So got the TV. It was a TV jail. And what I used to do is my neighbor, this kid, Ro, he was from, um, he was from Queens and shit. And he was Crip. He was like one of the first Crips I had met too. Like, there weren't really Crips in Clinton. So, Ro, Ro actually, Ro actually got stabbed. I'll tell you about that in a little while. So, Ro was my neighbor. Me and Ro was in the box together too. Like, he was one of my neighbors in the box. You know, in one of the boxes I was in. So, we went to Clinton. We went to Clinton together. You know, Ro was a cool kid. But again, he was Crip. I'm, 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 I was neutral. So, what he used to do is, we used to set it up. It was called the satellite, right? So, imagine the bars, right? Like you may see in the movies, okay? So, I used to take the TV, put it by the bars a little sideways, right? In my cell, sideways. He used to take his boot, put it outside the cell, and then take the roll of toilet paper. You know the hole in the middle? But the whole roll? He used to put that inside his boot, the whole toilet paper. And then he had a little broom. And he put the broom inside the hole. So it was like a stand. And then he put his mirror on the broom. <laughs> I mean, it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy, right? The broom, so imagine the broom, the toilet paper's in it. The stick is inside the toilet paper, upside down. And the bristles are up here. And that's where the mirror goes. And then he would just sit in his cell and arrange it. And be like, all right, I got it perfect. And he would watch it, the, the TV off his mirror you know that's how it was man you know you shared with your neighbors and stuff like that that's just the way it goes you get cool with your neighbors pretty much everywhere I went I was cool you know with the neighbors because those are the guys that are in close proximity of you Leo yo you got a set song yeah yeah I got you all right but you know next day you give it back to them or whatever you know what I mean like it's just they're in the close proximity of you so sometimes you get cool with the neighbors depends on who it is you know what I mean? You could tell if your neighbor's gonna be cool or not. You know what I mean? Or, or friendly or unfriendly. That's just you play it out. But most of the times you're cool with your neighbors. So yeah, Ro was a cool kid, but again, Ro, Ro was Crip. And back then in Clinton, you know, if you was claiming Crip, you was you was you was about it because you know, Crips were pretty much outnumbered. Like he was the only one I think on that side, and I don't know the politics behind it, but again, he was a cool kid and everything. I remember we were on the go back in Clinton. That means everybody's going back to their, to their cells. You see the smoke? It's, it, it's, it's cold as hell in, in New York right now. <clears throat> so um, we, were, we were on the go back. Everyone was lining up where they were supposed to line up so they could go back to their houses, right? Like, like when they say on the go back, everybody lines up in a certain area. And it's like, like maybe how you did in the schoolyard back in the days if your house is here, upper F is here, upper, you know what I mean? And everyone's lined up where they were supposed to be. That's how it is. And then, you know, dude ran up on row, hit him in the back, boom, boom. And shorty, it was a little dude too. And then he just kept it moving through the crowd. He was like, oh shit. He was like, yo, I've been hit, boom. You know, and they ended up like collapsing his lung and stuff like that. I mean, yay. You know, salute to him. I'm just saying, you know, gang politics. And it, it was just because he was Crip. You know, again, I, I'm not with the politics. Don't know nowadays, this was 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that just because he was Crip. Don't know what happened, why, you know, but that's the way it was. He was claiming Crip. 
and something had happened and he got hit. So Clinton was, Clinton was real. Clinton was real. So from reception, I ended up going to Upper F up there. Got a real TV, you know, got rid of the bogus one, you know, traded that, sold that, got me a real one this way here because they do slow searches all the time. So eventually you're going to get caught with that bad TV. You know what I mean? I didn't want that, so got me a legal one, got rid of the other one, you know, maybe gave it to someone. I don't even remember what happened. I just know I got a legal one. Then that's when I met, you guys remember the interview I did with Ja, Lawrence Bartley, right? You guys remember that interview? You know, salute to him. Beautiful, beautiful dude. If you guys haven't seen that video, go back and check the interview with me and Lawrence Ja Bartley. You know, you understand why I say he's a good, good, good dude. Anyway, so met him, and me and him got cool. And then he he got an offer or something to do this program, an anger replacement training program, ART, right? So or aggression replacement training. You know, people say different things. But anyway, and he was like, "You want to do it?" I was like, "Bet, let's do it." So we started teaching because what happened is this was like towards more the end of my bid. But throughout my bid, I always had good jobs. I always had jobs like teacher's aid. Like I got my GED right away, then I went right into college, you know? And then I got transferred from one facility to another, which was two different college jurisdictions. So I went from Junior College of Albany to Mercy College, but the, it was different things. Like Junior College of Albany, I went for business. Mercy didn't have that, so I, I started their liberal arts program. Okay, so I was always involved, like I was always involved with trying to better myself. I was always, like I always had that mentality because I seen what was going on around me and I seen the recidivism rate as people, as more years I did and more people I knew kept coming back and forth to prison. I knew I had to better myself. So I always had like those type of ambitions. I always had, you know, at, I told you guys at 21 years old, I was already speaking to kids behind in the penitentiary. I was talking to you, you know youths, junior high schools, high schools. They were coming in and I was speaking and I found my calling and I knew I could do some positive things with my life. You know, so I always had those kind of jobs where, you know, inmates didn't have their GED. I'm there helping them study. I'm helping them try to, you know, get their, get their lives together. The ones who couldn't read at all. Dude, some dudes were like millionaires in the streets, but couldn't read and write. And that's what I did, I would help. So anyway, so all of that is in my jacket. So I was offered the position to teach the class that I had already taken and, you know, and taught in other places. So me and Josh started teaching, you know, this, this, this anger replacement, you know, training and techniques and what to use, you know, when, when you know, when, when, you're, when you're faced with bad decisions or, or, you know, somebody steps on your shoes, what are you gonna do type things and how to de-escalate yourself more or less, right? So we taught this to killers though, because what happened is it's part of the family reunion program, the trailer program, whatever you wanna call it, where people like every 90 days could get to go into like a, a trailer for, um, you know, for a day or two with their families. Right? So even though you may have had 50 years, you got your wife or you got people, you know what I'm saying? You want them trailer visits. Those are important. You know, those are important to keep people like, you know what? I don't want to do nothing because damn, my wife is coming next week on this trailer for two days. Nah, I can't mess it up. So it, it's kind of incentive too. You understand what I mean? So they try to control certain things by, you know, doing certain things like that. So in order for you to get this trailers program, the family reunion program, you have to complete this course. You know, so we'd be in there teaching dudes, you know, who got 150 years, you know what I mean, for quadruple homicides. You know, what to do when someone steps on your sneakers. <laughs> Clinton Correctional Facility. So, anyway, you know, I got involved in sports in the basketball world there, and you know, Everything was all right. Now, we also had what's called weight courts. The yard in Clinton is the craziest yard in the whole entire state of New York. And that's what I'm saying. Now, 
When you go out to the yard, there's on the left, right here, on the left side, is a whole row of phones. The phones are all collect, so there's a lot of phones you can get on the phone anytime you want upstate, because your family's paying for it. It's not like Rikers Island where phone time and this and that. It's, you know, it's different. On the right side here, there's what's called weight courts. Okay, there's about maybe one. Don't quote me on this. Four or five, maybe five or six, right here. Boom, boom, boom. First one was like uh, uh, the white dudes, the motorcycle white dudes type thing. One of the courts was like the rat hunters. One of the courts, and one of the courts was was our court with Ja. Ja was Ja's court. So he invited me on that court too. So I got to know the fellas there. Now the weight courts are different than any other state, like any other any other prison in the state of New York. You can't just come out to the yard. Like you come out to the yard, your house is out there first, and you run and go get the weights that you're supposed to. You can't come onto any of these weight courts unless you know somebody. Some facilities, you come out, whoever's out there first, they go, go to the weight shack or wherever it is, and they get their weights and, you know, hey, you know, I'm doing presses today, yo, go get the 60s, go get the 70s. They put them by their benches, so by the time everyone comes in, it's like, yo, this is what we're doing here. Everyone's sectioned off. Not in Clinton. The only way you could touch a weight in Clinton is if you knew somebody. Facts. So it was the weight court, so you can have like five or six guys on the court. So only the people who are on that court come on that court. In other words, if there's someone coming trying to walk through, people are gonna be like, yo, 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 what you doing? Who you here for? What you, what, what, what's happening? You can't touch a weight in Clinton unless you know somebody. And then right next to the weight courts, they have showers that that it's not even a shower, it's just like a pole that shoots out water. And it only shoots out freezing cold water. Whether it's summer, whether it's winter, fall, whatever season it is, it's just shooting out ice cold water. And if you was part of the polar bear club, you took some showers up in there. And if you, you were really part of the polar bear club, you, you took showers out there in the... In, in the winter when it was cold because sometimes see like in certain places you only get showers like two three times a week so you would have to either go back to your cell and do a bird bath the porter he runs around the block and he comes around you know how your grandma had the thing like to, to flower the plants that you know what I'm talking about the porter will run around with a couple buckets. You go, porter, you put your towel on the gate or whatever, and he'll come and bring you warm water. From the, because it's going to take you four hours to heat up enough water, you know, that you want to wash yourself. So he'll come and bring you a couple big pails of, of warm water, and you do a bird bath. Or you could work out and jump in the, jump in the ice shower. <laughs> yeah, Fred was part of the polar bear club, you know what I'm saying? Because again, our weight court was right next to the shower, was right there. You know, and you couldn't, again, you couldn't come on. That's just the way it goes. And if you find out certain things, because there was a dude I knew from around my way, I knew him from kindergarten. He had came there, you know what I mean? He was with us for a little while, and then dude started saying he was stiff and dope. I had to tell him, yo, bro, I'm sorry, man, but... You can't, you know, you can't, you can't lift weights with us no more. You can't work out with us over here no more, man. Because he sniffed that dope. No disrespect to whoever do. I'm just saying, this is the, this is the politics of it. We don't have none of that around us. We wasn't with all that. So, you know, if you was living a certain, if you was doing, you know, any anything that we weren't, you know, if you were engaging in ex sexual activities with us, couldn't be around us. That's just the way it goes, no, you know. And I knew the dude since kindergarten. It is what it is. That's Clinton. Clinton Yard, when you come out, it's more of like a beach. It's like sandy. And the most 
Why I say it's the weirdest yard ever, I'm about to tell you guys right now, is what we have what's called like the courts. Ready? So when you come out, again, you have the phones here. To the right are some weight courts. Then you have the sandy yard. Now you go to the Now you have a hill. Like a junkyard. Looks like a junkyard. You have a hill. And there's like little landings on this hill going all the way up. Huge. And it's, it's massive. These hills. And each one of those are called courts also. And what it is, is you may have, it may be like a six feet by six feet dirt. But on there, you may have a little bench. You may have a little uh, 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 container to put your stuff in, like a little wooden container. Like on the weight courts, there's a container too where you put all the weights in at the end. Boom, seal it back up. Pow. Same thing on the food, food, on the courts up there. Okay? And then they have like a barrel. Okay? Imagine a barrel, and then on Saturday mornings you go out, you give me ID, you know, I'm the owner of 22 Court, whatever it is. And they give you a pile of wood in a wheelbarrow. Ch -ch Chop wood. And then you take it to your court and you store it. So when you and your people come out there, you put the wood inside the barrel and you light it up to get some heat right there. You know, imagine like the Rocky movies, dudes are singing the doo wop doo 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 doo, take me back right around the barrel outside. That's how it was. <laughs> Just like that. And then what were some people with those barrels though, they would cook. So you had hundreds of these little courts. Hundreds, small courts, like right next to each other. The only thing that's separating is like a row of rocks. You know, but up in them courts, there's a lot of things going on up in them courts. They're always tossing up. The, the, they're always tossing those courts. They're always up there searching them. Like when everybody goes in, they send the whole squad out there and they search, they toss, they dig. Because they know people sometimes like to dig, you know, put knives and stuff, lay them around. So, they, you know, the police is up on all of that. So they be digging out there, you know, making sure you don't have nothing out there. But they're all separated by little rocks. All the way up this hill. It's amazing. And then over here, you know what? You hungry? You go out to the yard? You know what? Let me go see what the Jamaicans is doing today. Star! What happened, Star? <laughs> Brethren! You know? Then you slide over there and see, yo, oh my God. The Colombians over there, is, they making them empanadas. Primo! Que pasa? You see what I'm saying? My point is you can go out there and get any type of food from any nationality. It's out there. You know, you want roti, you can get that. You know what I mean? Even the Asians got their little thing going on. And you, so you could get a little plate of food and a soda. You know, back then it was like cigarettes. So a pack of cigarettes, two packs, whatever it was. So you go out there with a pack of cigarettes and you get a meal with the soda. And then you bring that shit back to yourself. Clinton Correctional Facility. It was crazy. And then, in the back of the hill, like on the side, if you could go straight through the yard, the hills are on the right, but you could go straight through the yard, all the way in the back, you gotta walk up this long ass hill to get to the basketball courts, they're up top. You know, when I wasn't at the weight court, that's where I was at. You know, I never had a, a, a food weight court or nothing, I just never had that. I was always on the weight court with, you know, when, you know, my boys, Ja, Beretta, you know, we had a little team up in Clinton. We had a little Queens team, you know what I mean? My boy Beretta came through there too. You know, I know him, you know, we know each other since we kids. You know, he's home now. He did like 20 something years. Salute to him, man. That's my brother. 
You know, we had a little clean team. I'm just saying that Clinton Correctional Facility, my whole point to the matter was Clinton Correctional Facility was different. Clinton also was the place where, like, Tupac was. And I told you they have him all in a segregated unit, the APPU unit, which is more of, like, protected. Not that he wanted it, but because of his popularity, they put him in there. But there's a lot of people, most of everyone else in there is protected. They want to be protected, so they have to be in there. It's like 200 cells, and they're all, like, can't be mixed in population or something bad will happen, you know. Whether they had high-profile cases... You know, some type of racial case. That's where they would put them. And then when they come through, you got to get on the wall. No one moves when they come out. They have their own, eat their own mess hall stuff. You know, they have the commissary jobs and stuff, which is behind gates, you know, working with civilians. You know, they keep them separate. But Clinton was very, 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 very much real. So I seen so much violence up in Clinton, up in Clinton too. I see Tony the Roach too. One time, you know, mob hitman Tony the Roach, down with the Spark Steakhouse thing with John Gotti. He was like in his sixties at the time, man. I seen him and another dude jump another a, a white dude, and Tony Roach started beating him with a big ass rock. Boom, boom, smashing the kid all this. Boom, boom. Over that drug money. This is how you want to live your life, kids? Tony Roach is dead now, but... This is how you want to live your life? Somebody like Tony Roach smashing you in the head with the bricks? And the police can't save you? Beat you half to death? Is this what you want? I seen another dude a little war happened in the, in the box at one time. In the double bunk box. Spanish kid, we're going to call him Bush. Everybody from Bushwick is called Bush. Little Bush, Big Bush, Bushwick. You know how many Bushwicks I know? So we'll just call him Bush. He had a big chain. He let this other kid, his bunkie, hold it. And went on a visit. The bunkie went on a visit. Bunky, this was in the box. Bunky got yapped for his chain on the visit. Visit was over, boom. Everybody cuffed, dude still yapped him, swallowed. I think he swallowed the chain, I'm not sure. It was kind of big chain, so I'm not sure. But that's what dudes would do. Dudes would yap you and swallow the chain. Or stick it up their ass, but usually they'll swallow the chain. I'm just like, oh my God. I seen dudes swallow big chains and it was just like, how the fuck? See, like when a when a when a fucking a pelican or a stork come in on a fish, and the throat is like, and then he swallows. That's how some of these motherfuckers has got pelican fucking throats. So, boom, one of the gang kids robbed Spanish kids. Neither one, the Spanish kids weren't affiliated with nothing. So when he came back to the cell, he didn't have it. Just yeah, boom. Fast forward, about a year or so later, the dude who yapped the chain, had the chain, was wearing it. And the kid Bush came to Clinton. He was like, yo, that's my chain. Boom, so he ended up stepping to the kid. And the kid was like, yo, this ain't your chain, blah, blah, blah. But Bush knew it was his chain. And knew that that was the kid that yapped his, his bunkie at the time. So he waited. The kid liked to play basketball. So he waited. The kid played like two, three games, ran and tired, and Bush just hit him. Boom, boom. Hit him. Boom, boom. You know, the kid tried to fight for a second and then just dropped. You know? And, you know, during the scuffle, he was trying to take the chain and dudes broke it. He didn't get the chain back, but... He knew that that was his chain. And he waited because he waited and let him play basketball. And he, t you know, told me this later. Like, damn, bro. 
He said, yeah, I, I, I did it on purpose. I waited. So to get his blood flowing, to get his heart racing faster, so when I hit him, he'd bleed out faster. Like he was trying to kill him. This is the mentality of people up there. This is why I ask these kids, is this really what the fuck you want to do? Is this really how you want to live your life? Being around these type savages? Being around these type people who don't care anything about you all your life? Who wait till you run and play three games of basketball so your heart is racing so you can bleed out faster? Think about it. Think about what we're talking about here. This is why I say to everybody, man, especially to the kids, stay in school. Stay in school because you don't want to land in a place like Clinton Correctional Facility. All the names have changed, but the, 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 the characters are still there. Everything is still there, just like when I left. Please, just take my word for it on how it's described. Please. Just take my word for it. It's just not worth it. You gotta do something better with your life. Everybody, this is for everybody. Yo, you always gotta wanna do better. Don't settle. Don't settle. I'm not going to settle. I refuse to settle. I can't settle. I have three kids. I have three kids. I, I have to let them know of, of, of the obstacles that's going on in life. I can't settle. I got to show them the way. I can't settle. And this is why I'm doing this too. Because there's so many of these kids out here, like I said, being, being raised by these streets with no guidance, who don't see the obstacles. The same way I see my two-year-old running and seeing maybe if he slips, he could maybe run into this wall, so maybe he shouldn't run this way. And I try to guide him some a different way so he doesn't slam into the wall. That's the same thing I'm trying to do on a bigger scale through this. And let these kids know about these obstacles before they run into the wall. Because once they run into the wall, it's too late. It's too late. I'm trying, people. You know, I'm, I'm trying hard. I'm just trying hard to give back. I've done caused so much pain and destruction in my life to other people. I did not want that to be my legacy. We're all living to die, right? That's what they say. What type of legacy are you gonna live? Uh, are you gonna leave though? I knew my book wasn't wasn't being done written. I couldn't let that final chapter end with a conviction and a felony. That's not my final chapter. I'm still in the middle. I'm trying to leave my legacy. How about you? <laughs> anyway, people, you know I love you guys. I appreciate everybody stopping by. If you haven't subscribed to my new sports channel, please go do it. I got like 400 and something subscribers. I appreciate those people who, who've recently joined. I'm trying to get that channel up to Sports Talk with Fred White. Please, even if you're not, not into sports, just go over there and subscribe for me. Please. Love you guys. You guys know my motto. Experience is the greatest teacher. But somebody else's experience could be just as valuable if you pay attention and listen. And on that note, Fred White, signing off.